Welcome to my very first Devos with Dise here on my YouTube page. I used to post these semi-regularly last summer, but I got out of the habit and I've been putting it off. So finally, I'm just doing it. I said, okay, I'm going to stop putting off for tomorrow what I know that God is calling me to do today. So I like to share what God is teaching me in my devotional times with Him in the hopes that maybe you can get something out of it as well, but also because I feel like it helps it to go deeper in my own heart. So I would love for you to join me whenever you would like to. Um, you can subscribe. I hope to post these more regularly here on my YouTube page. For right now, I want you, if you have your Bibles, to turn to Joshua 4, but I want to tell you where this is coming from for me. I was listening to the radio the other day and a song came on that I have fallen in love with. I'm sure many of you, if you listen to Christian radio, you've heard it too. The song is by Elevation Worship and it's called Do It Again. The bridge, which is my favorite part, it says, I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. Oh, oh that song. My favorite version, there is a version um, that Elevation Collective does with some of my favorite artists that you've got to check out. I'll see if I can figure out how to do a link down here below, but it's such a good song. And that bridge in particular, it really struck me because it is something that God has been getting my attention on. And this is what, if you don't leave remembering anything, I hope that you will take away. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past fuels our faith in him for the future. Let me say that one more time. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past fuels our faith in him for the future. So in Joshua 3, this is when God split the Jordan River and allowed the Israelites to pass through it to get to the promised land. In a couple of chapters in Joshua 6, this is when we know the famous story of the Jericho walls coming down, which is allowing the Israelites to enter into the promised land. But in Joshua 4, there is something that happens that God has really been getting my attention about. I'm reading Joshua 4, verses 1 through 7. I like to read from the New Living Translation. It says, When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose twelve men, one from each tribe. Tell them, Take twelve stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it out on your shoulder, 12 stones in all, one for each of the tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. I'm going to skip to verse 21. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes and kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we had all crossed over. Here's my favorite part. Verse 24, he did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so you might fear the Lord your God forever. I want you to catch the reason why God says to do this is so that one, other people will know that God's hand is powerful and two, so that we might fear the Lord your God forever. This isn't a fear like to be scared of. This is a reverence. This is a acknowledgement of the bigness of God. That is the kind of fear that God is referring to here. And here is what I believe that God has been showing me, is that it is important to make a record, to have something to remind me of how God provided in the past. Because there's going to come a time where I will be questioning what is God doing in my life right now? 
And to be able to go back to that time and to remember what God has done is going to fuel my faith to believe him in the future. I want you to get a visual of the Israelites holding these big stones on their shoulders. And so it built up a monument. I want you to imagine it kind of like that. Like I'm imagining maybe four stones here and then three stones here and then two stones here and one, at four, three, so that's seven, eight. Well, my math is a little bit off, but I want you to imagine this monument that the Israelites will always be able to tell their children when they ask, what are these stones for? I want you to imagine because they were a very audible people. They, they told stories that reminded them of who God is. And so imagine parents gathering their children around and being able to tell them these stones right here, this is a representation of how God performed a miracle. This is what he did. And then I want you to imagine those children when they face situations in their lives, that they will be able to look at something they, they've not even experienced, that they're just hearing this story of how God performed this miracle and it is fueling their faith to believe God in their own lives. This is something that I think about with my new single that's out at radio. It's called Good News. And what I've discovered is that when I hear your stories of how God has provided in your life, it fuels my faith to believe him in my own life. In the same way, we need to be reminded sometimes of what God has done in the past because we are human. We have short memories. It is easy for us to forget the greatness of God, the things that he's done in the past when we are facing situations that make us have to have faith to trust him in the future. So what I have now is a running list on my phone. It's called, it's titled Stones of Remembrance. And I just make a running list every time that I see God do something that is one of those moments where it is, oh my gosh, Lord, I cannot believe that you did this. Look how you provided. Look at what you did. Look at the way that you provided in this way. It's something that reminds me that he did it before, he will do it again. It is something that reminds me that I can trust God no matter what I face. And so I keep stones of remembrance on my phone. It's just a running list of how God provided. And that is what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to create your own stones of remembrance. If you keep your phone with me, with you like I do, you can have a running list of all of the ways that God has provided for you in the past. Just take some time right now to think of when is the last time where you went, Wow, God, I cannot believe that you just did this. I can't believe that you just provided. I can't believe that you just um, performed a miracle in my life. And if you don't have anything like that, I want to encourage you to search your mind, to think through your entire life. When is the last time where you have seen God make a way out of no way? And every time that you are facing a situation in your life where you need a little bit of faith, I want you to read through that Stones of Remembrance list. I want you to remember how God provided for you in the past. And every time you hear that song, do it again. Every time you hear that bridge, you made a way when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I want you to remember how God made a way when there was no way. And then I want you to trust him and to believe that just as he did it in the past, he will do it for you in the future. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past fuels our faith in him for the future.